Hello, welcome back to the ministry, and today we're picking up on the Now You See Me movie review. We're on part 11. We're picking up where I left off. They were at the beginnings of the show. Thaddeus had already shown up, and he went backstage to confront the group. He uh, had already predicted a few of the things that they were going to uh, have already done, and it actually shook Merritt character because he was like dang he called that and he tried to not look like he felt shook but you could tell that he was starting to feel uncomfortable about the situation so um because Danny knew that he was there to expose them later but he knew that they were that uh, Thaddeus had an eye on it. So they went to get ready to go for their performance. Tressler notices that Thaddeus is there. He also notices that the detective and the cop are there. And of course, he tells them that they can't have no um, recording equipment. Meanwhile, the Interpol detective sits there and she manages to figure out, she said, I figure out how Leonard Shrike did the, did the trick. And he's like, how'd you figure that out? She said, well, I figured that what he had to have done was he had to have been there 20 years ahead of time. And he had to put the card in the tree so that the, when the tree grew, the card would have already been in there. He's like, so you think that he set this up 20 years ahead of time? He's, she said, it's possible. Where's your faith at? Let me take a moment to address this moment. God has things put into place that people will see happen now that he had already set a sequence of events, people, places, situations, scenarios, and circumstances to occur systematically in a sequential order to lead to certain things happening from 10, 20, 50. Anybody read the Bible lately? Anybody notice that some of the stuff that's happening in society right now has ha had happened in that Bible and was foretold to happen in that book. Anybody notice that? How could a book that was initially written hundreds of years ago have to date certain circumstances and scenarios? Do you know that 85 if we ain't closing in on 90% of Bible and biblical prophecy has already happened. So is it possible that that can happen? Yes. When God is in control, I remember years ago seeing a video. Sometime within the past seven years, I was sitting and I was watching television or YouTube. And I saw a video of a man that was talking about certain things that were going to occur um, <clears throat> in the factories, in motor vehicle times, and all of these kinds of things. He even talked about some of the things that uh, happen societal-wise with these um, viruses and stuff that have happened within the past several years. And it was like he talked about it to a T like he was there. And this was a videotape that occurred in the 1960s, somewhere around there, because it was still in black and white. So is it possible that the Lord could set up a series of events that he already knew? The people that, that were going to be in certain places the situations and the scenarios, even if the other people did not know who they were going to interact with, how they were going to interact with. Have you ever noticed how when people run into each other, they have a chance meeting? It's like these two people just happen to be at the same place at the same time and 
they made a connection, whether it be a business connection, whether it be a romantic connection, whether it be a circumstance or scenario, and they just happen to run into each other at an appropriate time. Everybody called and said, oh, that was kismet, oh, that was this, and oh, that was woo-woo, oh, that was. Was it? Or was that aligned? Now, some people would be like, oh, the universe and the law of this and the that and the other. What if it was God that lined that up? And he knew that this person was going to be there at that particular time. Why do you think God fights so hard for generational lines, lineages, and these kingdom marriages are so hard to come, come by and come together? Because when certain people and certain situations are lined up on the overall scale spiritually, that there will be a lining up of an alignment of God's will for things to be done. Certain meetings, certain places, certain spaces, all of these types of things. So can a car be put into uh, the ground when a tree was planted and 20 years later that car would be in the middle of that tree? Can it? Absolutely. Think about what a tree represents. Let's go here. When a tree, <clears throat> a tree is something that is rooted. The roots grow deep down into the ground. The tree grows up with the stalk, the limbs, the leaves. There are groupings of people, places, and scenarios that create networks and so on and so forth. God makes sure that the root system of what his plan is, I'm seeing an internal schematic, even uh, when you think about, why am I seeing that? I'm seeing, um, you ever see in the sewer system, the way that there will be electrical lines and piping and all of this? And the way that they set those things up. And it's interesting because this morning my dad was looking at something on the television about how they create sewer systems and underground things. I don't know what this has to do with the word. But it's an intricate network that was planned and built into these days is still being used. So you think that God can't do that. Whether it be electrical networks, groupings, people, systems. Trends, scenarios, things that occurred that set up certain things to happen, natural events, things that became memorable points in time that stemmed off roots that grew into. Think about it. When slavery occurred, the deep rooted systems. The Underground Railroad, all of these kinds of things. And the fact of how that process of from the beginning of slavery to the end of slavery and how it was abolished. And the way that that root system created a spiritual alignment in these people's families, family trees that grew up. And they may have stemmed off into multiple different families, lineages, leaves, all of these kinds of things. But these families and their core, think about it. And there was also money. Because a lot of people don't understand that there were black people in that time, in that time frame that carried money, wealth, and riches that were turned into slaves, much like back when you saw the Israelites. They had to be shifted, migrated, and started anew. And this happened multiple times with multiple different, from the Indians to the Africans to the Israelites. Think about all of that. And you think that this wasn't 
an intricate plan in order to make sure that people were in the right places at the right times in the right countries in the right states in the right cities at the right time to be able to claim their own properties lands now you think that wasn't on purpose I'm going to leave that there because I'm going to get back to this movie. So with that being said, they get on stage and I recall mentioning this, that targeted deceptions, they did certain types of tricks on the stage. For instance, they targeted a certain grouping of people and Merritt did a hypnosis trick that he said that when you hear me say quarterback or when uh, I think he said when I direct you to the quarterback, you're going to attack him when I say the word or when you hear the word freeze. That was a targeted deception, which you will later find out. They did a bunch of series of little tricks. I believe they said that it was a hundred little tricks that they did up until. Every single one of them were specifically planned in order to set a psychological set of um, key triggers in order to prepare them for their final trick is what they really did. Now, I can address this. When God works, he will give you signs. He will give you uh, certain codes. He will give you certain understandings at the appropriate times. And just like you will sit here and enjoy sitting and watching a, a, a prophetic message video pieces of content, so on and so forth, trying to figure out, oh, wow, this person person has this information and that and the other. God sends his prophetic voices into the world to speak what he needs to be said at the appropriate times in order to give revelations. Um, you can either, either say Dan, Daniel 2 and 22, and there's another one that's, uh, was it Luke? 12 and 22. But one of them, I know Daniel 2 and 22 talks about that God will reveal to you the deep things that you didn't know. God reveals information. And he puts it in places that you would least expect it in order to give you subliminal clues that you may have pieces to the puzzle. My coach was talking about this the other day. She was talking about how God will give you a part of the puzzle and you do that part. And when you complete that part, he'll give you another part. And then you complete that part and you do another part and you complete that part and you do another part. And it may take you years to complete this thing. And you're sitting up there trying to figure out what does this have to do with this, have to do with this, have to do with this. Because all of them are conjoined together, but you won't see the full picture because I'm seeing a puzzle where the way that my mom used to put puzzles together is she would say you put the edges together and then you fill in the middle. God will give you the edges of the puzzle and you're trying to figure out as he gives it to you. Well, this must go here and there and here and here. And God's like, I didn't say that. It's something that the Lord showed me in relation to myself that he gave me two years ago, four years ago. And now I'm seeing the sense that it makes. Because this is how God operates. He will give you pieces and you'll never have the whole puzzle. Because remember the edict that the man said a few videos back? You will never be ahead nor behind, but at all times will you be exactly where God wants you to be. You may not know the entire picture because it's not for you to know. If you knew, you might tell too much of it to somebody else. Only the people that need to know will know the part of the process that they need to play in the process. That They're the only ones that's going to know. 
But after that, they ain't going to know no more. That's it. They're going to know their piece to the puzzle. They're going to do their piece to the puzzle. He's going to turn their heart towards you to get whatever needs to be done for the season he needs to get it done in. That he will have an overflow occur in your life. Man shall give unto thy bosom, press down, shaking together and running over to the measure of faith in which he had. He will bring, lead, and divinely orchestrate situations and scenarios to lead up to certain scenarios. But once that person's job is done for the reason, for the season, or even for the lifetime, they're going to move on. Whether they're going to move on to the next assignment or they're going to move on out of this life. But they're going to get what they need to get done because God has orchestrated and aligned it. And when they've prayed and when you've prayed, he's going to make sure that what you prayed for, you will receive. I was listening to a young woman yesterday. I I haven't really listened to her ministry, but it's come across my feed pretty often. I was, was listening to her video and she was making the point of saying that God knows what he's doing. And because he knows what he's doing, he knew when he formed you in the womb what he was going to do. He knew how things were going to play out. And he knows the outcome of your life. You just got to walk in the steps. This was already pre-planned and schematic. Even what the enemy think he thinking he getting around God for. God knew that that was going to happen. God is a God that is omniscient, omnipotent. He knows from the end to the beginning. You ever heard that saying? This is a means to an end. God knew the end of the story before he started at the beginning. So if he knew the end outcome, it's just the people that be in the middle be thinking that they doing something that God don't know. God knew all that. How do you think that the pieces and the parts of the things that they think that they create in all of their own memory God will pour knowledge upon the just and the unjust. He will give them wisdom to create the screw that will be the part that will be the thing to the next thing. That's what I'm talking about with this trick. All of the parts and pieces may not have always been there, but how did a computer that became very popular more so in the 90s and 2000s when it actually was created in the 1970s, but they chose not to give you wisdom to release it until the 90s and 2000s. But you saw it in the old movies that were being produced in the 80s. You saw certain scenarios play out in films and television years before you saw them actually happen. How is that? I'm talking big, but big budget films. Did somebody have wisdom ahead of time that maybe that was going to happen? And then it happens almost exactly like the film said it was. Think about it. I'm going to leave that there. Let's get back to the, this because this is in depth um so they pull a hat out of a rabbit they do all of this kind of stuff but here's the main trick they do a mass hypnosis they done did that and then the last trick. All of your bank balances are wrong. Pay close attention. All your bank balances are wrong. The mentalist picks a black woman and has her focus on the numbers. I talked about this a little bit in the last one. The number five is the one that her voice inflection changed. Six, her voice inflection changed. Two, her voice inflection changed. He was able to pinpoint that her balance was 562. Now let's look at what 562 
means in the Strong's Concordance. In the Greek, it means unaccomplished, unedited, and endless. In the Hebrew, it means promise, speech, and a thing or word. 62.5 is my soul, wait thou only upon God for my expectation from him. He only is the rock of my salvation and my deliverance. I shall not be moved in God is my salvation, my glory, my rock, and my strength. Next, uh, the second one is blessed is the man that doeth this and the son of man that layeth hold it that keepeth the Sabbath for from polluting it and keepeth his hands from doing evil. Now one might say, what does that have to do with anything? Because of the fact that promises, we are waiting upon the manifestation of God's promise and God understanding the expectation of what it is. When you think about financial transfer, financial wealth, when God is preparing to do something, he's going to do it in its fullness. I've heard a lot of ministers say it this way, that when God says he's going to change your life, he does it in its fullness and its full completeness. He does not uh, do anything and leave it incomplete. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should have to repent. If he said it, he's going to do it. It's the way that it gets done is up to him. So after this, the woman says her balance and the, the guy Merritt tells her, no, your bank balance is wrong. The next person says that she has $1,477. One, four, seven, seven means foundations. Now think about this. Foundations can be a source of financial freedom, especially when you think of external credit unions and so forth. Stay, supports, help. People, places, and things that can support the foundation for the financial freedom in which he's preparing for his people that he's already promised. Also means the base that supports or helps itself. God creating financial structures and systems. I have heard more than one minister talk about this. And when you see multiple ministers syncing up, God is in the midst of it. That he is preparing a scenario where the children of God's money will be kept within the children of God's system. The problem is the children of God have been putting their money into the world. But I heard a minister say it this way. He said, if, if the children of God pulled all their money out of society and only worked amongst each other, the rest of the world could collapse because there's millions and trillions of dollars that children of God are pushing into societal places. But if they pull that money out, there are things in the world that would literally collapse because of the fact that godly money was no longer in there. Money from children of God was no longer in there. Um, next, 7714. Thou art the God that doeth wonders. 
and he has declared thy strength among his people, which is basically him saying, I am in control of the people, which is what I basically was just saying in the earlier part of this video. Sing to the Lord with a grateful praise and make music to our God on a harp. That when God moves, remember when the children of Israel passed over the um, Red Sea and the one woman who had the tambourine came out with the tambourine and started to sing the praises and that praise song that came. When God does the blessing, he will bring about a level of praise from the people that as the promise is manifested, especially in people's finances, there will be a sound released for the manifestation of God's will. Next, the person had 6500, which is bearing fruit and being fruitful. The shift that is going to occur financially is going to bring about a bearing of fruit that is going to be a fruitfulness for God's children that is going to shift and turn the tides for the projects, things, and scenarios that are of God's will in this time and in this time frame. And it's going to be one occurrence. God's going to create a scenario that's going to flush the finances into the right places and spaces at the appropriate moment and time that will literally go from this situation to that situation. A divine turnaround. I have been seeing numbers that are mirroring each other, which means divine reversal. God is going to cause a one-time occurrence to shift perspectives situations and scenarios for the blessing of God's people but the turning of the financial tide because everybody talk about the fact that money is a currency it flows where it needs to go if you're open it comes to you if you're not it will not return to you but when God directs the wave of the money be prepared it can either be in your pocket or it cannot be now, merit calls for the owner of the credit union that's funding their performances to come up onto the stage. And when he comes up on the stage, they bring a huge checkout that has a full set of number sequences as to uh, what it is that is in Tressler's bank account. Now remember, Thaddeus already done warned him that what you enact upon somebody else is going to come back and hit you, right? Well, let's look at it. 144, I actually have been seeing this number pretty frequently. 144 represents the month of Adar, the 12th month in the Jewish calendar. Jewish or Greek calendar, I'm not sure. But it also means to properly brand sense of discernment clear discernment and to cut through hazy and unethical morals. You recall me talking about Proverbs 11 and 1 that talks about unethical financial and business practices 
Not only that, we talked about the fact that there was a certain set of people that financially received a whole lot of money that went directly to these individuals and these individuals only off of a certain Pandora's box. Certain banking systems, certain credit unions, certain um, pharmaceutical places, certain grocery stores, certain places capitalized off of this thing happening, including um, certain stores, because these were the only stores you could shop at during that time period. Think about it, because they were the only ones that were allowed to be open during that time. Now, think about if it was an unethical practice. That money going to have to come back. All right. And with that being said, and saith unto him, see thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, slew thyself to the priests, offer for a cleaning of those things which Moses commanded in his testimony. God is doing a cleansing of these things. Certain things will not be known, not be said. People have wisdom, knowledge, and parts and pieces to this puzzle. But God uses the foolish things to confound the wise, so they may be looked over, though they have the information. Romans 14.4 Who art thou that judge another man's servant? Remember I talked about the witnesses that were killed, destroyed, and even prophets. People that were godly had, had testimonies that were killed. To his own master he standeth or falleth. Ye he shall be holden up for God is able to make him stand. <laughs>